I'm Karen Hole and I'm a professor at the University of California, Santa Cruz. I study how ecosystems work and then use that information to try to restore ecosystems in areas that were used for agriculture and other human uses that are no longer being used for those purposes. Restoring ecosystems is important not only to protect animals and plants, but also for people. Ecosystems provide important services like taking up carbon, improving water quality, and protecting erosion along the coast. In addition to doing research, I also teach students and work with graduate and undergraduate students on research and restoration projects, which provides important job skills. I also work with people who manage lands for government agencies, uh, private organizations, private landowners, to help apply the results of my research to improve land management. Today, we're standing here at Younger Lagoon Reserve which is a University of California reserve. There's a number of different habitats. There's wetlands, there's coastal dunes, there's also grasslands and coastal shrub communities. A lot of these lands were used for agriculture for about 100 years. Now what we're trying to do is to do research and management to actually restore these ecosystems. We're here in an area that was historically used for grasslands where we want to restore the native species back. The way we usually do that is to plant plants like we saw at the last site. But that's pretty expensive and labor intensive. So one of the things we're researching are more cost effective methods. One of the things we tried here was to try to seed plants, which is cheaper, and we tried two different methods. The first one was just to scatter the seeds on the soil surface and use a lawn roller to help increase, to press the seeds in and increase the seed soil contact. The second uh, treatment that we used in some other plots was to use a drill seeder where the seeds drop down a little hole and they're buried. Then we came out, we did that in October, we came out in April, and we measured the native cover using a quadra. We get down and we estimate the cover of the species. And right here, we have a lot of native grasses that established. We also had some of these right here behind me is a native wildflower too that established in the plots. What we found was that in the first year, about six of the 10 species we seeded established, the grasses generally did well, no matter how we seeded them, the wildflowers did a lot better when they were seeded on the soil surface because the seeds didn't seem to like to be buried. But that was the data from just one year. So we're coming back out this spring and hopefully for a few more years to again come to measure the, the different native and invasive species and figure out how well the ecosystem is recovering. So one of the big challenges to restoring native grasslands is invasive exotic species. So invasive grasses or wildflowers like the sour grass, they've evolved in Mediterranean climates elsewhere, like in Europe or in Australia, and then they invade here and they outcompete the native species. And what a lot of people do to get rid of them is to use herbicides, but that's not really an option for us here because we're right next to where people live and so there's concerns about human health. So we're trying to research non-chemical control methods to control the, not, the invasive species and then plant in the natives to restore native grasslands. So a couple of the strategies we're using is one, we're testing cardboard here that you just get out of the dumpster as a waste product and laying it down to smother the grasses. We also are testing the paper mulch, which is another, but we actually, another strategy, but we have to buy that. So we're testing them in different plots over here. And then the students that I'm working with on the research are planting the plants, the native species, into those areas. They also put, we put wood mulch over too to help keep the um, invasive species down. And then we're, this is the first year, so you can't really see the plants, but we'll be monitoring this later in the spring. And then we'll continue monitoring it for a few years because, and see how well the ecosystem established. So what do we do with all this data? Well, first we enter them in the computer and then we make graphs and we look at our results. Then we share the results with different people. We write scientific papers, but more importantly, we share the results with land managers through talks and summaries of our work. And we're really interested to hear the, the feedback from them on our work so that can help us to prioritize future research that we do so that it's most useful for society and helping to inform conservation efforts.